In this video, we're gonna use Luminar's AI to take this raw landscape photo and turn it into this final cinematic image. We're also gonna create a template that you can then use to batch process entire sets of images using those same AI tools. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to the channel. SLR Lounge is your place for no-nonsense photography education but we still have fun. So we're gonna go ahead and just dive straight in. We're teaming up with Skylum to create a series of Luminar tutorials featuring their latest release, Luminar AI, which has tons of great updated tools. And along with its batch processing capability, it really gives us a very different way of looking at a traditional editing workflow. So. I'm gonna not talk about it, I'm gonna actually show you. Now, if you haven't watched the portrait workflow video, I'd recommend going back and checking that one out as well. But for now, let's go ahead and just, you know, step zero, get our images into Luminar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add folder with images. I have prepped some exercise files for y'all. So let's just go to my desktop and the exercise file. So you guys can download these. It's it's the, there's basically two landscape DNGs um, that we have. You can also just load up your own landscapes if you wanna do that, that's totally fine too. Now one of these is a large panoramic image. Uh, the other one is just a single file. So just to make this a little easier on my computer, let's just use the single file instead of the crazy resolution. So the way that I like to work inside of, of Luminar, and granted, you can kind of take any approach that you like. This is kind of my workflow. See, normally my traditional workflow is going from nuts and bolts and then going to like kind of global type stuff, like exposure and contrast and white balance and then kind of going through. And if I wanna do, you know, additional steps in compositing and masking and all that kind of stuff, that's later. With Luminar and the way that it presents its tools, we kind of reverse the workflow. And that's what I found personally to kind of be easiest. What I like to do in Luminar is begin with a template, kind of make large AI-based tweaks, adjustments, sky swaps, those kind of things, and then go back to the small nuts and bolts, adjusting contrast and all that. So let's just get started. We're gonna go to step number one. I'm gonna select a template. So as soon as I choose templates, uh, you'll notice that I'm actually in the sub menu right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the templates secondary menu. And from here, it actually detects that this is a landscape photo. So it gives me kind of suggestions on different categories. I'm actually gonna choose scenery. And let's see which one of these we like. So you're gonna think of these templates as kind of a nice starting point. And I really like this uh, pleasing touch. It is it is a very pleasing touch. So if I hold down a backslash, I can actually see the before versus the after. The look that I would like to go for for this image is a more kind of cinematic and kind of just dark vibe to the image. So this pleasing touch is, is really nice. And I'm gonna see if I wanna adjust the opacity. I actually like this a little bit on the heavier side. So I'm gonna leave it right around 75%-ish. And let's go ahead and jump to edit. My next step is to edit the LUT if I would like to. Now, I like the way that this LUT looks. Let's just go to the creative side, go to mood, and let's see if there's a LUT that gives me a little bit more of the vibe that I wanna go for. Now, if you're unfamiliar with LUTs, Luminar gives us the option to basically be able to choose from these existing LUTs or load our own. And LUTs are uh, a remapping, basically, of colors, right? So basically, this is taken over from, from the cinema side where we're making you know reds more orange, we're making blues more teals, we're shifting colors across the board to get to different sorts of color grades. Now the built-in stuff is great, but you can also download, you can also create your own LUTs, which makes it very powerful because we can layer these on top of everything else that we're doing. Now what I like is this Beijing LUT. I'm gonna select that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if I wanna dial it up or down a little bit. I actually like where it's at. I am gonna flatten out the contrast a bit. And saturation wise, I'm actually gonna pull back a little bit as well and keep it right about here. Okay, so the next piece that I like to go for is the sort of larger AI-based adjustments. So here we're talking like sky swaps, we're talking atmosphere, and I believe atmosphere is actually new to Luminar AI. So let's do that. We're gonna go sky swap and we're gonna actually choose, you can even add a galaxy. Now I've been noticing that uh, Luminar AI, the sky swapping is 
even more enhanced, which is freaking fantastic. Ooh, I love that. Okay, so here's the thing. My big thing when it comes to sky swapping, and this is regardless of what application you use, you have to choose the right sky. The sky has to naturally have a light source that looks like it matches with the image that you're actually adding it into. So for example, this sunset is perfect, right? But let's say I choose um, one of these. Let me choose one that's obviously not going to work. Okay, so here in the original image, holding backslash, you can see that. The original image, the sun is over here and it's behind the mountain. So we have this kind of halo along the mountain. You can even see a little bit of the sun touching this side. So if I add a sky where the sun is like right here, that's super unconvincing because that sun would have been touching everything in the scene, but it's not. So you end up with a, a disconnect, a visual disconnect where the viewer sees this and goes, ah, oh, something is kind of wrong here. I'm not sure what, but it doesn't look like it quite matches. So always, always, always choose a sunset or choose a, a sky where the light source in that sky matches the same light direction as your image. And I believe we had sunset one. I love this. The light source is behind the mountains. You get that perfect halo. You get this beautiful touch of light on the clouds. It's subtle. It's, it, it's absolutely awesome. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to atmospheric haze and let's pull this up a bit just to get a little bit more of a subtle blend between this sky versus kind of the background. And that looks freaking awesome. It, it did a really great job of blending. If you want to zoom in, you can always zoom in. Just look at the blend line. It looks like it's done this flawlessly. I don't need to make any adjustments. Yep, well, that's easy. So easy kind of makes the purpose of a tutorial almost a moot point. Okay, so let's go to atmosphere. This is completely new. Now we have the ability to kind of add in atmospheric effects. So what I want to do is I want to choose a fog or a mist that's lower in the scene. So haze works, but the layered fog I think is going to be the, the one of choice. So look what it's doing here. It's just adding. And with the existing fog, I absolutely love kind of the way that it blends in. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to increase the depth a little bit so it covers a little bit more of the scene. The amount is, is good, but I'm going to bring the lightness of this down a bit. So what I wanted to do is just kind of open up the shadows. See, before these shadows got pretty deep and dark, but now we're adding a little bit more fog. So it kind of opens up those shadows, adds a little bit to our existing fog in the shot. Notice a lot of the adjustments that I'm doing are very much just kind of enhancements to the, what's already there, right? I'm trying to enhance what's already there versus like, you know, add a whale into my sky, which I think you can actually do now. In the augmented sky feature, I believe you can choose, what do we have? Nope, I can do a giraffe. Yeah, see, I, I just don't know if I want a giraffe. I mean, that it's very convincing the way that giraffe is poking his head out of the mountains. It's the gig this is kind of fun. <laughs> now I'm just gonna start playing around with all the, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, completely, you know, <laughs> unrealistic and you can actually move these objects to where you want. Yeah, that's actually pretty, pretty nifty. Uh, but let's, let's not augment our sky right now. Let's just kind of work on creating a really realistic and cinematic kind of image overall. So I love this. It looks absolutely awesome. This isn't a portrait image, so I don't need to do any portrait AI stuff. Let's go now to our tweaks. So notice that we've kind of done this overall vision and now we're getting back to tweaking contrast and like subtle things, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to light first. I do want to create a subtle matte look to this. So what I'm gonna do is delete one of these control points by just double clicking. And now I'm gonna pull up from the bottom to kind of create a matte in the shadows and I'm gonna now pull down in the shadows a bit. I'm gonna do the same thing on the highlight side. I'm gonna bring this down. Now the whole image is getting very flat and that's because we need to bring the mid-tone contrast back. We don't need this many control points either. So what I'm gonna do is just delete one of those control points and now I can control mid-tone contrast really nicely. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. Okay, so everything that's above this white point goes to a bright gray. Everything below this black point goes to a dark gray. We're just gonna tweak this matte finish a little bit, okay? I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna bring the shadows down a little bit. Right about there is where I get to this nice, very subtle blend in this curve. 
I like it a lot. So you can also do this. You can shift this little slider to change the balance back and forth. So as you pull to the left and right, you'll notice how it's kind of adjusting the midtones and pulling them more to the left, which is basically brightening our midtones a bit. So I'm going to do that and pull just to the left so I get a little bit of a brighter mountain. And this looks magnifique so far. If I do say so myself, okay? Can I say so myself? I'm gonna reset out smart contrast, highlights and shadows because we're actually gonna use super contrast. And I think I forgot to, I forgot to show this to you guys in the last one. So this is a little, little extra extra. So look, let's do one other thing. I'm gonna tweak my temperature a bit. Um, I want a little bit more warmth in this image right about here and I want a little bit more magentas as well. So I'm gonna pull the magentas up actually quite a bit and bring the warmth up a bit too. That is looking fantastic. Okay, so now go to the pro panel. I like using features that are called professional because I like to think of my thing. Let's just stop. Okay, so in super contrast, we often overlook this completely, but this is a great way where you can really fine tune contrast adjustments within a template. Now I want you to think all this adjustment, it's just not, it's not just for one image. I'm creating a template that's going to be applied to all of these images and even other images as well, right? So think of super contrast as your fine tuning contrast adjustment, where I can basically just dial in exactly where I want my highlight contrast to be. Then I can pull the balance back a little bit. I want to get a little bit, see how I'm getting a little bit of that kind of kiss of highlight right in those clouds, which I love. And then I can kind of fine tune and tweak that just a little bit. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go to mid-tone contrast. Okay. I'm going to pull it up and then I'm going to start adjusting balance on this side. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. So let's bring it back to about here and now let's kind of fine tune again. So right about there. Now let's do shadow contrast. I'm going to pull it up, start adjusting the balance and I'm going to bring this a little bit to the right and start dialing back the overall contrast level just a bit. So what this just did was it fine tuned overall contrast of the image very subtly. Now, when I save this template out, I can use exposure, smart contrast highlights. I can use all of this to fine tune on an image to image basis. So this is where I'm going to make adjustments to particular images and I can have that control now. So that's the way I like to create templates so that I have flexibility. I kind of like to hide away, you know, a lot of the, the meat of what the template is doing. So that way the, the simple tools that are right there for me are the ones that I'm going to use to make tweaks and adjustments. So I love this. This looks cool. All right, let's save this out as a new template. We're going to go ahead and go down to the three dots, press save. It'll now say pleasing touch edit. And now if I go to templates and under my collection under my user templates, I have pleasing touch edit. I'm going to call this, let's call this cinematic landscape. You can name them whatever you'd like. Okay. So now I can select the other image in this series, press control shift S and you'll notice that those settings get applied to this image. Then I'm just simply going to go from image to image and make little tweaks. So for example, let's load up this panoramic shot. It might take just a second to kind of load and apply all the settings. So I'm going to click edit. And from here, really the only significant thing that I want to adjust is again, we left smart contrast here so that we can control that on an individual image basis, right? So now I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. I'm going to raise the shadows a little bit. So we get a little better balance between the, the mountains. So it kind of looks like it fits a little bit more. The only other thing is the sky got a little bit too orange compared to this photograph, right? So going back to this shot, I'm just going to go to my HSL and I'm going to pull a little bit of those oranges out from the HSL. So what I'm going to do is drop into color. I'm going to go to saturation and all we're going to do is just kind of pull out some of the orange saturation to get this to better fit and match the other photo. And right about here is where we can see in just the thumbnails that it kind of matches very, very nicely. Now look at the before again versus the after. Absolutely awesome. All right, there's one last tool that I do want to touch on because we'll speak more about it later. But if I go back to this image and I'm in the essentials palette right here, you'll notice a new tool called Composition AI. I actually really dig this. And here's the thing. I would always say that 
It's your job as the photographer to get your shot right in camera, right? To compose with what you want in your frame. And I'm not changing that. But as a learning tool, this is a fantastic function because I can actually use Composition AI. And if I'm just starting out in photography, I can use Composition AI to see what does the AI think that the composition in this photo should be. So let's go ahead and select it for this image. And you're going to see that it actually gets to a very nice and pleasing crop on this image. So applying Composition AI, I do agree that this is a better composition. Now, am I going to accept this change? No. And the reason why is because I usually will shoot an image a little bit wider than I actually want it just because I don't know where it's going to go quite yet. When I'm shooting it, I'm thinking that I want to might use this for print, but I don't know exactly what size of print that I want. So I like to leave a little bit of extra room in the frame for cropping when it goes to print or publication or anything like that. But as a learning tool, Composition AI is absolutely awesome. We also have all of our additional kind of cropping and perspective rotation and other transform adjustments available to us here inside of this menu. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed. Here are the before images and here are our final images. We also created that template which we can then apply to anything. I'm hoping that Luminar AI's tools is kind of expanding your vision on what's possible and kind of showing you a completely different workflow. If y'all enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us a ton in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and comment below. Let me know what you guys would like to learn next and make sure that you turn on notifications. So when we do upload that video, you're actually notified. Meantime, I'm gonna go hang out with my kids. All right, peace.